Breaking news here on CBS Sports HQ. The Dallas Mavericks have made it official. Jason Kidd is their new head coach, according to reports. Kidd replacing Rick Carlisle, who resigned after a 13-season career with the Mavs, recently being named as the Pacers' next head coach. Of course, Kidd very familiar with Dallas. He had two stints there as a player, was a part of the 2010-2011 team that won the NBA Finals. Uh, but for many, his coaching record has left more to be desired, 183 and 190 as a head coach. First one season with the Nets, then with the Bucks from 2014 to 2018 when he was fired that January. Uh, Kidd spent the past two seasons as an assistant with the Los Angeles Lakers. And for more, let's bring in the coach, CBS Sports NBA analyst Avery Johnson, the NBA champion. Coach, uh, what are your initial thoughts on this hiring of Kidd and the Mavericks? Well, my initial thoughts is, you know, Kidd is a guy that uh, obviously is a Hall of Famer, you know, when at the end of his career, developed a really good jump shot. Uh, he's the type of player that can relate with Luka Doncic. That's what this is all about. It's about relatability. It's about communication and connectivity. And so initially my thoughts are, you know, he's the NBA championship with the Spurs. He's got, had a long history with Mark Cuban, the owner. I had a chance to coach him for half a season uh, back in 2008. So I just think, um, you know, his, uh, the way he played on the court, uh, not so much as a score comparatively with Luka Doncic, but just him being a legend, Hall of Famer, um, world champion. I, I think the Mavericks thought in terms of their ownership that this was the best fit for the Mavericks moving forward. What can he bring? I mean, you talk about Luka Doncic. What can he bring in terms of his skill set that can help Luka? I, I think just his ability to make sure that he continues to get others involved, uh, that Luka understands that even while he has the you know numbers with points, assists, rebounds, that is you know connecting with your teammates off the court. You know, having guys that will really want to play with you, uh, being coachable. I think also he's probably going to address, you know, Luca's relationships with the officials that, you know, maybe you just can't complain on every single uh, call and, and, and lose your focus and, and you lose your ability to, uh, you know, finish games, especially when teams turn up uh, the defense. But also one note to this, because Dirk Nowitzki was hired as a special advisor to the owner. His relationship with Jason Kidd in terms of their championship team and Dirk's 20-year run uh, with the Mavericks, I think all of this converged together, which made Kidd the best candidate for this, this opportunity. Do you think they moved a little bit fast here, Coach? Because, I mean, he, he, Luca's got one year left. He's not a guy you want to lose in free agency based on how they're kind of overhauling the franchise. So do you think that Dallas moved a little bit fast here, or do you think they maybe should have taken a little bit more time in terms of trying to find the right fit? Jeremy, I don't think they move fast because uh, the, the one way that they move fast, <laughs> I think Luca's back in his home country. They call Luca to make sure he signed off on this deal. That's 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 the fast way that they move. So I, I think this was all pretty much orchestrated. I can't think of the Mavericks interviewing five or seven coaches. I, I think this was maybe, you know, an assistant coach on the staff got a little bit of a look potentially. But I think all signs pointed towards Jason Kidd getting his job. Rick Carlisle actually said it in his departure as Mavericks coach that uh, Jason Kidd should be the next coach. And I guess <laughs> I guess he had a little bit of a crystal ball of what was happening. Jason Kidd, as we mentioned, I mean, his coaching record uh, leaves a little bit to be desired, 183 and 190 in his head coaching career. So what kind of an opportunity is this for him? Well, it's an opportunity to hit the reset button because, you know, his record is not glaring with illustrious uh, coaching career and wins in the regular season and the playoffs. Um, I, I think this is an opportunity for him to hit the reset button and prove that he, he's learned a lot. You know, he's been an assistant with the Lakers. Uh, he also had some time off 
uh, from coaching. So I just think this is a time to show how he's matured as a communicator, as a tactician, uh, and, and how he's improved in in-the-game situation, being able to uh, make the necessary adjustments. But not only that, how to develop uh, the young players on the Maverick staff and get them to improve because Luka Doncic is going to be fine. It's about the other guys. What do you do with Przingis? You know, do you help him take his game to the next level or he's going to be somebody that's going to be on the trading block? There are a lot of decisions that need to be made, but uh, this is a wonderful opportunity for Jason Kidd. And to be quite frank, um, these opportunities don't come around very often. They lost to seven games in the Clippers in this postseason. Coach, you're someone who has said that that they need to get Luka help. So in terms of Kidd coming in, what's his first move? I think his first move is to assemble, uh, you know, his coaching staff. And he's got to get the right associate or assistant head coach. Uh, probably somebody with a little bit more experience that have, you know, won uh, not just at the college level, maybe at uh, not just at the NBA level, but maybe at the college level. It's a different time in, in the NBA right now. So having uh, somebody that has that those type of tentacles and bandwidth uh, to all different levels of basketball could, could be something that could be very productive for him. So I just think getting the right coaching staff, guys in player development that's going to help develop the team, uh, that type of support uh, behind you is going to be very important. And, and I think also... Yo, now that uh, some of the restrictions have been released all around the country in terms of uh, COVID, you know, getting on that airplane and going to visit these guys one on one and, and just trying to set the groundwork of what your vision is on how they can take the next step as a franchise. OK, so the Mavericks head coaching job reportedly off the board again reports that Jason Kidd has been hired as their next head coach. That leaves four openings remaining. The Magic, uh, the Blazers, the Pelicans and the Wizards. So of those four spots, coach, which one do you think is the most attractive opening at this point? Well, I would say definitely the New Orleans Pelicans because, you know, you have a guy like Zion Williamson. Um, you know, it's a team that didn't make the playoffs. Um, I think they have a, you know, very high ceiling with a couple of moves here and there. Um, but I, Zion Williamson, you know, having an Ingram who's now an all-star, a lot of young talent on that roster that just needs to be developed. Um, so I, I, I think the, the Pelicans is a very good opportunity. And also you need to wait and see what's going to happen with Portland. You know, if Damian Lillard is still there and, um, he's he's going to remain there and play the rest of his career in Portland. You always have a, a chance whenever Damian Lillard uh, uh, is your point guard. So, but if he's not, if he's going to you know get traded, then that opportunity is not going to be uh, as uh, attractive. So, I would say one A would be the Pelicans and one B would be Portland. Okay, uh, Coach, uh, don't get any ideas. All right, we want you <laughs> we want you hanging around here with us at HQ. All right. <laughs> I'm hanging around. Coach, hanging around. Avery, Coach Avery Johnson joining us to talk about the reported hiring of Jason Kidd as the head coach of the Dallas Mavericks. Good to see you, Coach. Thanks very much for uh, hopping on with us on short notice to talk about this. And, of course, the NBA playoffs continuing tonight. Hawks at Bucks. Uh, earlier on HQ, a coach said, hey, this Bucks, this is a must win for them tonight. Uh, they're getting eight points as they take on the Hawks. They cannot afford to go down 2-0, says the coach. And, of course, Clippers Suns resumes on Saturday with Game 4. Uh, Suns leading that series two games to one.